Alpha Sessions. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's edition of the Alpha Sessions. Today I have the brilliant Lucy May Walker in our studio. Hi. Welcome, Woo. finally welcome. <laughs> We've been trying to get her in for a while. Uh, you've never been in here before, have you? No, and it's... It's lovely. It's very warm. I mean, I'm, I'm glad you said that because <laughs> we've recently been on Radio 2, which we're going to talk about. But okay. it's, you know, forget forget about them. Forget about that because this is the it's real gone. deal. Um, They're dead to me. So I <laughs> I first saw you at Wembley Busking Festival, I think. Oh, with yeah. With Alpha Sessions crew, we went there to see you. Um, oh God, that's been years ago now. Um, International Busking Festival. Mm. Uh, was it pre-COVID? I think it must have been. Yeah. Yeah, it must have been. I'm going to go for 2019. Yeah. That's that's where I first laid eyes on you, and ears. Um, and you are brilliant, and you've, you're a very good achiever, you're very active. Was busking your, your beginning in music, or did you find your beginnings elsewhere? Um, yeah, actually. So I'm from Redditch in Worcestershire. Mm-hmm. Whoop, whoop. Near Birmingham, for anyone that doesn't know where that is. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I moved to London with this like dream, because I feel like, you don't have to live in London now, but at the time in my head, if you want to do music, you have to be in London. Classic. Not true. And now I'm just <laughs> poor. But um, <laughs> but yeah, so I, I moved to London and I could barely play guitar at this point and just was like, right, I'm going to go to London and then I'm going to be a famous musician and then realise that like you've got to get a job. Mm. Did that for about six months. Um, and then I started busking through a busking competition, Mayor mm. of London's busking competition wow. it was. It's very um, official. Boris was the mayor at the time, I think. Um, yeah. The good old days. And uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, so I started busking through the competition and then I just spoke to people there and they were like, oh, you should really try this out. Um, you could do pretty well. And then after the busking competition, um, I just bought the stuff, the amp, the microphone guitar and um I started and that's kind of like where I just became a better musician just learned more chords learned more songs mm. and it's like you're practicing every day and earning money so yeah mm-hmm. it, that's definitely the way that I started it's a win-win mm. and it's a good network would you say that's one of the yeah. main things if you were to recommend this kind of busking life you just get to meet so many people yeah um Pretty much all my friends, it's probably quite sad, are all buskers. <laughs> like, all of us are buskers. Um, and, yeah, it's, it's a good way to, to meet people. It depends where you busk. Like, on the underground, mm. um, you're obviously, like, on your own busking, but you have, like, the changeovers <laughs> where you have, like, a five-minute conversation. And, and yeah, and most most buskers, not all, most buskers look out for each other and, and they're all nice people. Nice community. Yeah. And it's worked out for you because, if people don't know, this is kind of where... The big break happened for you when Jeremy Vine, oh, my hero. just your absolute hero, and what a nice guy. Just will you see you at Waterloo, Charing Cross Charing Station? Cross. Yeah, um, 2018. Mm. I was busking at Char- uh, Charing Cross Station. I love telling this story. <laughs> I've told it so many times, and people are like, "Oh, you, do you really want to say it again?" I'm like, yes, yes, I do. Yeah. Um, because people don't get these like b- big breaks very often, mm. and busking you always have the hope that someone might discover you but really it doesn't it doesn't happen I mean it's I think I was busking for maybe six years before Mm. this happened but um, I was busking at Charing Cross Station Um, didn't even see Jeremy Vine Um, he didn't tip me however it's fine well I don't think he did Um, and he however I got I think I went for a meal afterwards and I got my phone out like two hours later and just loads of Twitter notifications. And he had tweeted saying, I've just seen this amazing busker. Can't remember her name, but it had Walker in it. And all these people that know me found me and like tweeted him. Um, And then I slid into his DMs. Not in a dodgy way. I don't (laughs) think so anyway. Um, And I just said, look, you've got a Radio 2 show. I also do my own music. Um, I'd love to send it to you. And then literally the week after he played my song on radio too that's amazing isn't it yeah I love it and him. it's something you don't see coming and it, you kind of become mm. pals now and it's like having that not like an insider like a gin but like having somebody that you can contact that can just support you yeah in times like recent times when you've released something and it's been significant and it's just like gone crazy um, but before this discovery how did you feel so you came to London how did you feel about the music industry because I think it's changed a lot in the mm. last sort of five years but where, where was your place in it at the time yeah, I don't know. I 
I think I just started writing, so I was really, it was literally, I was just new into mm. music. Um, I think I'd released like an, an EP that was awful looking back, <laughs> but um, very exciting <laughs> at the time. Um, but yeah, I've, I have a love hate relationship with the music industry. Mm. Um, mm. I think it's gone, like I'm an independent artist and I kind of love that, but I also, there's negatives with that as well, like mm. it's a lot harder. Um, but then you've got so much more control. Um, and the social media thing now, I'm very lucky because I have a personality that I love doing that stuff. Like, um, I always find that like the music is just like a tiny part of, mm. of being an artist, whereas like you do these interviews and it's all fun and you also have to be your own marketing person mm. and manager and all this stuff. But um, yeah, I, I like being an independent artist. Um, for now <laughs> I mean, it's a good place to be yeah um speaking of love hate relationships though mm -hmm. you mentioned busking already i saw recently posted about not hating won't go as far as say hating busking i can hate busking okay I so it on. is love hate it's love <laughs> yeah, hate yeah it is how, how have we come to that point is it just overdoing it is it you would you quit it forever would you just take a break mm. from busking um if i'm answering honestly mm. if i didn't have to busk um, if I was earning a living just from original music, I probably wouldn't ever mm. do any more pub gigs. I wouldn't busk. Um, but then, hmm, it's given me so much and it still gives me so much. All the opportunities I get seem to be from someone seeing mm. me busking. What was the question? Oh, love, hate, rejoice. Love, hate. I just find it like, uh, I think it's just when, be when it becomes your job, it's less fun. So now, when I first started, it was this fun thing on the side when I, I worked in a coffee shop and mm. I went busking and earned a bit of money and it was really fun. And then it's just like everything. If you, I think for me, being happy in life is variety. Yeah. So if I'm, I hadn't busked on the underground, for an example, for over two years and I just started busking on the underground and had the best few weeks and loving it again, like... Mm. And now that I'm like relying on the underground busking again, I'm going, okay, I'm over that. So I think it's just having variety. Um, but busking can be very difficult mm. and it's, uh, you earn way less money now um, than pre-COVID because no mm. one carries cash. True. Um, but yeah, love-hate relationship. Would I quit? Yeah, probably, <laughs> if I could. I think that's it. It's kind of a springboard. It's like, it's mm. a beginning and it's something you always feel connected to, Yeah, I guess, but you do want to move on from it, like anything. Like yeah, anything. and I think it's always going to be there. Like, you know, being an artist, um, as you, you are yourself, you know this, is like very up and down. Like you might have like an a amazing thing happen to you and you think, okay, this is it. Mm. But it doesn't happen like that anymore. Mm. It's like... I mean, Radio 2, for an example, I've just played on li um, live on Radio... No, I didn't play. I was on Radio 2 um, being interviewed mm. uh, a couple of weeks ago. Literally the next day I went busking. No one knew who I was. And it was the work... I probably made about £10 in two hours, <laughs> and it was awful. Um, I don't know what my point was. Feel sorry for me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember. Just that... It's well, it's still kind of that love hating. It's a springboard, oh, and yeah. it's a good place to begin, and you want to hold on to that. It's got a special place in your heart, but you do want to move on from it. It's always nice if, if I'm like, oh, okay, what am I doing today? Nothing. Oh, okay, maybe I'll go and busking on the South Bank. I've got a license to do that, so mm. it's always nice that it's there if, I, if and when I need it. Mm. There we go. Have I answered do that? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Um, did you ever use it as like a trial for new songs, or do you always do covers? Um, uh, no, yeah, busking, I do, it's a really good way to practice with without the pressure of like an audience, especially if I'm busking on the underground, mm. I might go, right, I need to, if I've got like a gig and I've not played like a new song live yet, mm. it's a perfect place to play it without the pressure of an audience watching yeah. you, um, but also a slightly more pressure than just playing at home. <laughs> so yeah, I do, I do. Uh, I do the odd original song when I'm busking, especially if yeah. I ever get someone come up and be like, listening, I go, ah, oh, here's one of my own songs. An opportunity. Yeah. Slide it in there. Um, so the first one you played for us was one of your own. Yes. Actually, all three you played for us yes. were one of your own. So the first one was Full of It. Thank you. Yeah, I was like, what did I play? 
Yeah. Is that an uh, unreleased one or is that something? It is. Oh, so you have a false eh? It's it in there. unreleased exclusive for you. Um, Thank you. It is from my debut album, which is coming out next year. Um, so yes. I'm excited. And what's full of it about? Can I uh, you can ask delve me. in there? It is about <laughs> men, but not mm. all men. Mm-hmm. Not all men. Um, <laughs> telling you exactly what you want to hear but then realising that it was all just big lie. That's just classic. To isn't get it? what they want. Isn't that sad? Yeah. Does this come into your life a lot? Thinking about being a woman <laughs> in music, I always like to talk about mm. the side of it because there's a lot of a lot of different opinions. Some women, female artists, don't really think about it that much. They don't come across too many challenges that they deem, you know, big obstructions. How do you feel about does it affect you? Um in, in my life? personal life I'm now in a relationship with a lovely, lovely man. So that's lovely. Good. Um, but uh, yeah, I think, oh God, it always comes up. Like, I don't know how to answer the question, how does it feel being a woman in music? Because it's just, I don't really think about that. But mm. there are things that happen that you look at, like, song credits and stuff, and it's like, oh, well done, you've managed to get on a credit um, with 10 men. And uh, I just think, I am trying now. I used to have a. Uh, what am I saying? Sorry, I've got so many thoughts. <laughs> They're not coming Let out it all right. Spin out. Okay, so I'm trying now to have more women on my team mm. um, because it just happened that like my my band was all male and I was the only female and um, mm. uh, I now have a mastering engineer who is a woman and she's amazing mm. called T- Katie Devine. Yes. yes. Oh, she's great. Um, and I'm trying, so I've got a tour in April, I'm trying to get more, um, you know... Supports. Just just people in my band that aren't yeah. just men. But it's hard, like... It's hard, isn't Just because most people... I just don't know as many, so people just end up having hiring more more men when actually we need to work a little bit harder to find... They're, they're out mm. there and they're amazing. Mm. We just need to find them and hire them and be... Um, more represented. I thought you liked me Cause you said you did I thought you liked me But you were full of it Turns out every word coming out of your mouth Was just another lie that you spouted I thought you liked me But you were full of it I only wanted the truth from you You see anything just to get me in bed But why'd you keep on going I was already there Yeah Yeah You were just a bad boy I was just a girl You were just a bad boy That sold me the world Turns out every word coming out of your mouth Was just another lie that you spouted You were just a bad boy Told me the world I only wanted the truth I never got that from you You see anything just to get me in bed But why'd you keep on going? I was already there Want a relationship, but don't bother asking us what we think. Guess what? It may be we wanted the same thing. Would you play your games instead of talking? I only wanted the truth. I never got that from you. You see anything just to get me in bed? But why'd you keep on going? I was already. Why'd you say you did? 
You didn't have to. You could have got away with it. The Alpha Sessions. So you want to get all these women together, get mm-hmm. a good band, and for this tour, mm-hmm. you'll be playing with your band, I'm yes. assuming. Headline tour? Yes. Which is brilliant. For your new album, Nothing Ever Stays the Same. Well done. No, no, I, I know these things. I, I followed you for a while, you know. <laughs> um, and specifically, before we go into the, the depths of it, you signed the album name over time, as in like um, sign language. Yes. You sign language. And okay. I, I, wanted to, I want to ask you... Yeah, uh, you can teach me that later. <laughs> but um, I, I thought about sign before, and I can't remember what happened to me like a couple of years ago. I learned something in sign, and it is something that you don't even think about. Yeah, you don't. Even th- and then I saw that Instagram. I'm like, oh yeah, sign. Why so, did that happen? Um, I met a friend of a friend who is deaf, and just made me completely just think about things in a whole different light. Mm. Um, things like if you're on the tube, mm. and something happens on the tube and everyone's listening to the announcement and then they know what's happening. Mm. Most of the time those announcements don't come up anywhere yeah, else. Yeah. Just things like that. Um, and yeah, I just follow her on Instagram and really found her really inspiring and I just thought, I want to announce my album title in a cool way. And I was like, ah, oh, hmm. that would be a cool way for me to learn a little bit of mm. sign language. I mean, five words, but <laughs> it's, it's a, a start. start. Yeah. It's a start. And um, yeah, so I didn't really think about it more than that. Um, well, it's actually unique. Yeah. It's very unique, and it's a good it's a good thing to have for yeah. yourself instead of just like I'll oh, put a video on about the album or something. And yeah, I thought it was a cool way. Thing. Although annoyingly, did you see the Ollie Murs thing? No. <sighs> on like the week that I announced my album title in in British Sign Language, he released a music video of his new song in what he called sign language, but it was a thing called Makaton, <laughs> and there was a big. Th- big hoo-ha about it because um, Makaton is not sign language and he was doing these signs oh, that don't it's yeah um, so he had to take his video down and I was like because well. <laughs> he didn't af- he didn't ask a deaf person to show him how to do sign language oh, and that he asked like an influencer who didn't know sign language but claimed to <sighs> Rookie error. anyway yeah sorry the album's coming out I don't and nothing ever stays the same <laughs> yes. What? where did that title actually come from is this related to the whole feeling of the album is it like a a hint of what's to come. Like your questions. Um, yes. So the kind of theme of the album is is all about change, um, and the title is actually a lyric of the of a song mm. that didn't make it onto the album. Oh. I'll release it at some point, I'm sure. Okay. Um, but yeah. So and I just was trying to think of like how do I describe the whole album, and then I just thought I was looking at my lyrics and saw that one. I thought that does kind of describe most of the album hmm. and and you can take it in a positive way and like if you're going through like a bad time nothing ever stays the same mm. it's good it's just it's going to move on and mm. you're not going to think about this but you can also be negative and be like oh I'm really enjoying this happy moment but, but it will end. it's not going to last so make the most of it oh god I hope they take it the other way <laughs> well. um, did you is this the album you created I saw you doing a crowdfunder yes come in. this is you're what so came good out with your research <laughs> so I love crowdfunders because I'm too scared to do them and I need to try it. But mm-hmm. when you've got a good following and you have that like thousand true fans, yeah. you've got those true fans, you've, you're winning and yeah. you can really go for it. But how did you find that campaign? Uh, it's So it's actually my second... Mm. So the, what did I do? I did a Kickstarter campaign mm-hmm. in 2020 for my second EP and that got like oh, so much support. But then I just feel like releasing in 2020 for me didn't work and mm-hmm. it just... We'll move on from that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm always surprised about how people want to help you because um, you. So it is scary putting mm. that thing like, "Hey, give me money for no apparent reason," but you always are surprised about how many people are actually like rooting for you, and especially when you're like an, an ind- independent musician that I guess starts from busking. Mm. People are like they want to see you do well and they want to be a part of that. Um, and yeah, I got so much support for the, the crowdfunder um, and all of the names, well, not all of the names, but a lot of the names of people um, on the crowdfunder are in my CD to say thank you. And that's another thing I was going to mention is that you always have like, not incentives, but just like nice, you mm. do nice things in return. I think that's what people forget to do. So they go yeah. out there and think, why isn't nobody helping me? And it's because they're just saying, give me things. And yeah. 
they don't really it doesn't go two ways but like you've done things in the past I think about like pre-ordering mm-hmm. stuff or you're doing that now with pre-orders yeah. and albums you get bundles yes. and you know there's like um, campaigns where you can set an amount of like records that you want to press and uh-huh. then you sell them pre-orders and you have to sell a hundred then they get pressed yeah. like you pre-order them that's clever um, and that, that's something really interesting but so I mean it's gone well because mm. the album <laughs> the album's coming yeah and I've managed to do um, it's coming out on vinyl as well which actually amazing was that through I can't remember I don't think that's through the crowdfunding but I, I also got some funding um, from uh, help musicians and mm. um Drake Yolanda. So that's uh, Yolanda Brown mm. and James Drake. It's called the Drake Yolanda uh, mm. Award. Um, so because I had the money from the crowdfunding, then the other funding that I got could go into things like, mm. oh, now I can make vinyl, which wasn't a, an opportunity before. Um, funny thing that's happened with the crowdfunder is people have forgotten because it was so long ago and they keep ordering more CDs. I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> it's coming. You're going to get like 10 CDs. Like, don't worry. So I might need to send like a reminder oh, email. Um, but, you know, they can give it to a friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just send, send an email and say like, hey, if you receive 10, you know, yeah. by accident, just sorry. Right, it it's Christmas, it's Christmas. Oh, no, it's coming out after Christmas. No, yeah. <laughs> Easter? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> possibly Easter. Um, so you are, you're completely independent. As you mentioned, but you have management. Yes, I have a manager. How long have you had your manager or worked Ooh. with? 2019? Four years? Is it something you Ish. recommend to a lot of independent artists? Um, at a certain point, yes. Yeah. Like, I think if you are doing it all yourself um, and you're... Uh, I think you'll know when you need a manager um, and it's only to a certain point and most of the time you can do all of it yourself um, and people artists think I think a lot of the time that oh, I need a manager because I need to focus on doing the music mm-hmm. and they need to do all the other stuff since having a manager I do all the other stuff even more because I now have someone on my back going hey remember <laughs> that email that you need to send you need to send it so it's, it doesn't make it easy. You don't have less work to do, mm. if anything, I would say yeah, more. <laughs> more. Um, but it's just nice having someone on your team and it's nice to go, if you get an email going, hey, I want you to play at this, how much do you charge or something like that? Mm. And you're like, oh, I don't know. Send it to the manager, then I yeah. don't have to deal with it. Um, he's really, really good. The, I think the best thing he is good at is um, motivation because mm. as as a... Self-employed <laughs> musician. Sometimes I'm like, ah, oh, shall I write a song yeah. or shall I just watch Netflix? I, that's the choice. That's I just the dilemma. Still do, but yeah, but I think people forget that it's more about advice, isn't it, than anything else? Yeah, they do think like, oh, they'll get me gigs and stuff, and like do my stuff. No, well, that's a, a booking agent. Oh, I, if any booking agents are listening, I need a booking agent. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's he's just kind of looks after everything, and he's. It's nice to go, oh, I've got this really good idea. Is it a good idea? Mm. Hey, is it a good idea? And they'll go, yeah, or no. And they go, okay, cool. Mm. Yeah, you still have a lot of autonomy. Like you still have a lot of control over what mm-hmm. you want to decide to do. Um, mm. Like you do song commissions. I do. Which is important because your recent single from the debut album is coming up, The Hardest okay. Goodbye, yes. is very important um, and it's very emotional. Mm. And we'll hear it soon. Um, and that one, that one did come from a song commission. Yeah, so that was in the pandemic um, because I would say probably 90% of my... So I I do music full-time. Probably 80%, 90% of that is just live gigs. Obviously lost all of that. Mm. Um, So we were just thinking of ways that I could still do music Mm. and make some sort of living. Um, And yeah, I started doing song commission. I can't remember. That might have been my manager's idea, actually. I'm going (laughs) to say it for the interview. It was my manager's idea. And just said, right if anyone wants a song I'll charge XYZ um, and then most of them were like happy love songs for their Mm. partners (laughs) and uh, yeah this um, uh, lovely woman called Sydney got in touch and she just said look I have experienced baby loss um, big been a big part of my life and I want you to write a song for my partner about it because there aren't any songs about it and it can no one talks about it and it can feel really lonely Mm. Um, so will you write a song about it and I just thought oh, I don't know if I can because it's not something that I've been through personally and 
I don't know about you, for, but when I write songs, it's always about, mm. it's like a personal diary. Yeah. So I was like, let's see if I can do this. Um, and I felt like I, I just owed it to her um, to write it. So yeah, it was very difficult to write, but um, uh, it's like the song I'm most proud of and probably always will be because mm. it doesn't, it's not about me. It's not my song even. It's like not even my words, it's her words and words that I've taken from um, other people that have lost uh, babies, so. Yeah, I think it's quite poetic as well, which is very, it's very carefully done because you mm. can do it, un, you know, not very tastefully, and it could have been yeah. done a bit. Could have been awful, yeah. Full on, and everyone would be like, "Oh my god!" Yeah. So I guess it's kind of scary doing commissions for things like this. I mean, if I'd received an email like that, I'd, I would have to think about it quite hard. It, it, yeah, I, I, it, I just wanted to do it right, so mm. I'm, I'm glad it, it, and I had no. I always say when people send me uh, ask for a commission, I say, look put it in like the terms and conditions there's always a chance that I will release this you can stay Mm. anonymous um but I had no desire to release a song when I was writing it until I got the reaction from her and thought and she said how much it helped her and her partner just kind of come to terms with it and think about it in like a safe space and then I thought right if it's helping them then this has you know the ability to help more people one in four pregnancies end in loss there's a lot of people Mm. that this song could help so that's why i released this song two hearts beating together two hearts made you together and one half you stole from your mother and one from the man of our dreams our hearts once were we aligned, but then soon they fell out of time. And I would have given you mine if I could I'd do anything. I held you every second of your life, and I love you for every moment of mine. If there's ever a rainbow. I know it's you in the sky And we miss you Every day that you're gone When we thought we couldn't go on Only here just for a moment But you were the hardest goodbye We tried and we tried once again And I promised this wouldn't end like the first two clinging to life desperate to keep you alive but the nurse came sat us both down and she told us there was no sound of your heartbeat and our hearts stopped too cause I held Every second of your life and I love you for every moment of mine If there is ever a rainbow I know it's you in the sky We miss you every day that you're gone And we thought we couldn't go on Only here just for a moment you were the hardest goodbye It's been years now And it doesn't get easier still Now longing to hear how your cry sounds Still asking why and how Cause I held you every second of your life And I love you for every moment of mine there is ever a rainbow I know it's you in the sky We miss you Every day that you're gone And we thought we couldn't go on Only here just for a moment You were the hardest goodbye Only here just for a moment you were the hardest goodbye. The Alpha Sessions. 
And it has helped a lot of people, I think, yeah, as well. And there was so. Baby Loss Awareness Week. Mm. It wasn't that long ago. Yeah, October, mm. like end of October. Um, and now you've recently been featured by Jeremy Vine, your pal, yeah. on Radio right. 2, which, because I listened in on this, and I everyone was Thank just you. kind of sobbing. Yeah, <laughs> including me and Jeremy, yeah. which was yeah. awkward. <laughs> no, I thought so, because at the very end of the yeah. section, I remember he said, like, right, we're going to play a VT and get hold of ourselves mm. and then it went just straight to the VT I was like oh, oh my god fun fact um, Bobby from the new travel news yeah. came in and she uh, like, I was fully crying because people mm. sent in stories and they were on the phone like calling in telling their stories of losing um, their children and it was like nothing can prepare you for like how you know emotional that is so I was do you know how hard it is to cry silently on a microphone <laughs> to millions of people I was oh like God. Oh. and then I'd like look at Jeremy and he was he managed to keep it together but he was like choked up and then Bobby from the travel news came in she's like right I've come to stop you all crying he was still playing the song for the second time mm-hmm. and I looked at her and she was sobbing they had to <laughs> delay the travel news so I like I know that's it's really bad but I was also like it is this amazing. is a great song. It, 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 it is. It's powerful though, isn't it? It's something yeah. that is it's weirdly like even if you're not affected directly mm. by it, it's something that you can empathize with and something that will yeah. just get in there. That's kind of the point of releasing the song, not just for people that have gone through it, it's also for people so like we whether you know it or not, we'll all know someone that's gone through that. Yeah. So it's kind of being able to put yourselves in their position and be a better understanding and know what maybe not always know what to say but know what not to say because mm. you can really say the wrong thing and make it completely worse you just need to be there for people mm. that felt like that came out way better than anything else I've said yeah. well I think it's something that's very <laughs> yeah it's very p- passionate mm. you know um, and now it, after that it went to number one in the iTunes sing, sing a song song writer, chart yeah which oh, that's incredible that yeah. must have made you go a bit like right I've, I've just got to cut off from the world disappear drink <laughs> drink some wine yep well, yeah, I was in the pub, so I went Brilliant. from Radio 2, and I was like, oh, friend of the show, Daisy, Ch- Daisy, Sh- Daisy oh, Shoot. I can't remember if I say it, so yeah. no, shoot. Um, I was like asking my friends, because I was like, I can't go on Radio 2, and then just go home and cry. <laughs> Who's free to go to the pub? Daisy Shoot was free. And I was like, right, we're going to the pub. I went, we, we need to go to a pub that's close by, just in case Jeremy can pop in. Which he didn't, but that's okay. Um... <laughs> Oh my god, it was so expensive. Um, six pounds seventy a pint. Uh, I should have moved anyway. So yeah, I was just like drinking and trying not to be on my phone because you can just spend the entire day. It's almost like release day. You just spend the whole day yeah. on your phone. And I got a phone call from um, my partner going, "Lucy, have you seen the iTunes chart?" But he was looking at the regular one, mm. and I was like number sixteen on that. I was like, "Oh my god, that's wow. huge!" And then I went, "Hold on." What about the singer-songwriter chart? Went on to number one, and uh, Daisy, was, we were sat next to these two guys, like, having a lovely time, <laughs> and she was like, excuse me, she's number one on the singer-songwriter chart, and they're like, okay, well done. <laughs> so, yeah, had a nice time celebrating. Um, yeah. Would you consider that, like, mm-hmm. the peak of your career so far? So yeah. far. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Yeah, the I thought moment. the last time, where I, so I went on Radio 2 twice, mm. I feel so lucky to say that and yeah. drop it so casually, but <laughs> I thought the last time was the peak, but this time, like it, it felt so much more meaningful. Um, and yeah, my first time being number one in the singer songwriter chat. That's brilliant, and it's a good place to now be like, right, I'm ready for more. Yeah, especially when you've got an album coming up. Um, Thank but also, you. you've had some other good achievements that I'm quite interested in, like support gigs. Mm. Um, specifically, a couple of support gigs that I noticed. One with Texas, Sean, yeah, so good, and Tony Hadley brilliant how did these things just happen <laughs> how do, i mean obviously you work and they don't just happen you um yeah charlene was quite recently in texas was yeah the texas one was like a big highlight that just ca- i say i don't have a booking agent but it was through a booking agent that we kind of oh. know through my manager and they just asked me i mean it wasn't in finesse so when i got mm. the phone call it was like two weeks um in advance and they're like hey do you want to support texas i'm like yes absolutely yeah. when no, two weeks time it? in finesse took me 11 and a half hours to get there oh, no. but it was like no. it was such a good gig um and then i got to do it again like a couple of weeks later in sterling mm. both in scotland and um, she's amazing like her voice is like oh, 
so good. Um, so that was, yeah, just through someone we knew. And then Tony Hadley through another agent. I don't know why they asked me. I think they were like <laughs> trialing me out to see if, um, I guess, if I was any good. I mean, I was good, but they've not asked me um, for any more gigs. So maybe, I don't know, maybe if it didn't work out. <laughs> yeah, if any of them are listening, you can't. I need an agent. Uh, um, Tony Hadley is also a really nice person. Just, mm-hmm. um, I, I didn't get to speak to Charlene as much as I mm-hmm. wanted to, but Tony, like, <laughs> his manager was like, he kept talking to me. And he was so lovely. And his manager was like, Tony, people have paid for a meet and greet. <laughs> You're delaying it to speak to... You can speak to Lucy another time. I'm like, sorry, Tony. <laughs> but yeah, he's, he's great. Should have gone the meet and greet. I'm like, hello, Should've, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah that's, it's brilliant. I mean, you, so you play a lot. You played these two mm-hmm. gigs. What would you say, if, you, if straight away comes to mind, what's the favourite gig you've ever played? Oh. <sighs> oh, God. That's hard because... Mm. Let's do support gig and mm-hmm. then headline gig. Mm-hmm. I played the I played the Water Rats in King's Cross just after the first time I went on Jeremy Vine, and it sold out. Um, and that was the first time I played a song, a song called Heartbreak Song, and I could hear the audience singing the words. <sighs> And it's just like a, oh, I've made it. So th- I think that still stands in my mind um, as like a probably my favorite favorite ever gig, and then support gig. I would say that Inverness um, supporting Texas mm-hmm. because it was how many five thousand people I want to uh, say, yeah five thousand. Um, they weren't all there, but no one needs to know that. <laughs> um, and uh, I love support gigs because it feels like a challenge to win them over yeah yeah. and I feel like just you get half an hour and you go right speak to them and and that's my favorite part of live Mm -hmm. gigs is the chat Mm -hmm. as you can tell because I'm not shutting up um Mm -hmm. and just trying to win them over and you there's just like a a sweet point in the set where you're like I've got them and I had them just there so that was yeah that was good good what about the dream venue if you could pick any venue I mean in the world mm. not even just in the UK but there must be somewhere you think like one day I'm gonna be in there well I want to play Ali Pali actually because it's it's be on my doorstep and it's like I've played outside <laughs> and I've just recently played before Maggie Rogers but not on her stage in the food court <laughs> so I'm like I want to play Ali Pali that is a dream but I I like intimate venues yeah. so yeah I'm gonna go for Shepherd's Bush Hall. Mm. Is that a thing? Shepherd's Bush Hall? Is what it's the called? Empire? Or I don't know. Do you, the, there's what an O2 Shepherd's Bush she- Empire. Forget that. that one. Shepherd's Bush Empire. Is that it? Yeah. Could be the one. Bush Hall is not that. Bush Hall is a separate thing. <laughs> I played that. It was okay. <laughs> Take that out. <laughs> it's alright. <laughs> yeah, won't, won't remember that. I'm going to say Ali Pali. There you go. Ali Pali. Okay. I mean, I don't know. Your tour next next year is going through a lot of venues. When is your tour? Is it March? Uh, it's, it's. This is annoying because it's the first week of April, but also thirty first of March. So, so yes. basically April, first week of April. And you're going all around the country. Edinburgh, mm. Leeds. <laughs> Let me think. Edinburgh, <laughs> Leeds, Birmingham, Bristol, Brighton, London. Hey, brilliant! And they're all headlines. Who have you got supporting mm-hmm. you? They're all different. Or are you travelling with a crew? Um, so they will be different I'm mm-hmm. going to do let's just announce it here I'm going to do like a a little competition thing I don't, that's not probably not the right word but like a, <laughs> a social media campaign okay. um, where people can apply um, to support me because I think we should give opportunities to people and as an artist I love seeing other artists give those opportunities mm. don't like it though <sighs> when it's fake and they do this like social media thing and they're like oh cover my song and support me on tour but they've already picked the supports it's not going to be like that it's mm. going to be real and um, we're going to sit me and my manager sit through the applications and, and choose who would fit um in and hopefully in their local uh, venue local city mm-hmm. local place what yeah, am i yeah. saying yeah apply region uh, so I'll, I'll announce that officially probably January time yeah oh, that's very but exciting exclusive. lots of campaigns yeah. lots of things to look forward to lots of I fingers mean, in pies a headline yeah, <laughs> it's the best way to be isn't it so remind me when the debut album's coming March the 10th March the 10th yeah people should look out for that 
Um, you can pre-save it now. You pre-save it now. It's going to come out everywhere. Um, the final song you play for us, Bad Day, is mm. that an old one? Yes, that's, not that's from? from my latest EP. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, yeah, it's the title track of that EP, which you can stream now and buy on CD if you, you've got a CD player. There you go. So you get a dose of what has been, what is on now, what's coming up. Then you're going to go see her on tour. Yes. You might even be supporting her. You might be yeah. watching her and be like, I'm going to do that. I'm going to apply. Absolutely. Which is brilliant. Well, where can we find your social media before I let you go? Um, Lucy May Walker. May like the month, Walker like the crisps. Um, mm. Thank you. Uh, I have said that before many times. <laughs> yeah, okay. uh, and that's pretty much everywhere. I'm on TikTok. Probably shouldn't be, but I'm on it. Um, oh, good for you. Yeah, thanks. Are you? No. no. <laughs> you will. You're okay at some yeah, point. Yeah, I will. <laughs> it's coming. Brilliant. Well, Lucy, thank you for coming in. Thank you for having me. Had a lovely me. chat. This See has been soon. so nice. <laughs> You mess things up on the day you showed up Thinking that you had all the answers You really took a chance, I didn't you spare a void Haven't you heard before? I guess it didn't even cross your mind when You stepped over the line and I know I should've wished the worst on you when you self-check out, I hope your items don't go through And if you stood on like a well, it wouldn't be a shame Cause I hope you have a really bad day You drove up and down, hoping she'd come around Acting like you had the best intention But you forgot to mention Didn't care what she lose Only that she chose you And I believe in every word you say Cause you got inside her head And I know I should've wished the worst on you But when you self-check out I hope your items don't go through And if you stood on like a well It wouldn't be a shame Cause I hope you have a really bad day I hope you stub your toe, lose your keys Hope your friends forget your birthday Miss your train, your planes are late Hope you get out bit on eBay Shrink your clothes, break your phone Buy new shoes, they give you blisters Get locked out of your new house Hope your oven breaks at Christmas And I know I shouldn't wish the worst on you but when you self check out, I hope your items don't go through. And if you start on level well, it wouldn't be a shame. Cause I hope you have a really bad day. And I really hope she leaves you someday.